Rich Knight, contributing writer for Makeup Artist Magazine and film instructor for EI, School of Professional Makeup. And today we're going to talk about the seven basic painting techniques that you need to know. For my base coat, I've chosen to use Pax Paint. Pax Paint is created by mixing 50% acrylic paint to 50% prosate adhesive. There's no need to measure it or weigh it. I'll just pour an equal amount of my adhesive into the acrylic paint and mix them together. This will make a smudge-proof foundation that's ideal for painting latex props, masks, and prosthetics. Painting darker colors beneath layers of lighter colors will help create a more realistic and organic skin-like appearance. This technique is commonly referred to as underpainting. I'm going to take darker shades of green and model them together to create an undercoat before layering lighter shades of green. I will also throw in some browns and yellows. This is what we call the rub-off method. I start by mixing a darker color. Again, this, this color should be much darker than your base coat. As you can see, it's so dark green, it's almost black. These are just acrylic colors, just like I used to make my Pax paint, only this time I'm not adding any prosate adhesive. I'm just going to thin it down with some water. So I'm going to take a little bit of distilled water. I'm going to add a little bit of my pre-mixed paint. I'm saving a little for later, just in case. And I'm going to take this batch here and mix it down with a little bit of water. Give this a little bit of a mix here. And again, the idea is to create a wash of color. It should be um, kind of thin and runny a little thinner than the paint you might put in your airbrush. Kind of about, about the consistency of milk, I, I suppose. Only you don't want to put this in your cereal. Once I have it mixed, I'm going to go ahead and paint the uh, wash of color into an area, a broad area of texture. I'm going to tackle this low point right here. I'm just going to paint all my wash into the sculpted detail there. And I'm going to do this in sections because your paint will dry on you. If it dries before you're able to wipe it away, you might be in trouble. Now I'm going to take a piece of sponge upholstery sponge in this case. I'm just going to wipe away the color from the high points, leaving the color at the low points. And you can see how it is a quick way of revealing all that sculpted detail without having to hand paint each and every line and wrinkle. Some areas you may have to repeat this process in order to get the desired effect. But with minimal effort, you can use this technique to bring a lot of detail from your piece very quickly. This is a very common method for painting props and masks. Again, we call this the rub-off method because we're rubbing the paint off right after we apply it, only leaving the dark colors and the low points, and rubbing it away from all the high points. See how it just brings out that beautiful detail. I'm going to move my way up the piece here now, choosing which section I want to do a little bit at a time at this point. 
now I'm gauging my working time. Again, I'm gonna take a sponge and now wipe this color away from the high points, allowing it to settle to low points. You can see how that just beautifully brings out the detail. Work my way around this piece until I'm happy with the end results. Again, I might have to do this once or twice in some areas in order to bring out all that detail. But there's no questioning the results. Another very important painting technique for you to know is what we call the dry brush method. Now with a dry brush, the idea is that we're taking a chip brush, which is primarily dry with only a bit of paint on it, but it's dry pigment that we're painting with. And the idea is to take that brush and to drag it over the high points, leaving behind a highlight at the high areas and a shadow at the low areas. The dry brush technique goes hand in hand with the rub off method and you might say it's the exact opposite. It works a little something like this. I'm going to take my chip brush and I'm going to dip it into this acrylic paint. It's just acrylic not packs. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that paint from my brush and I'm going to brush it off onto this paper towel. Now I'm going to take this dry brush and I'm just going to drag it across my high points just as I suggested, slowly introducing a highlight color to the high areas. I'm just kind of brushing the chip brush back and forth to distribute my color, watching as I go to make sure I don't overdo it. I have too much paint on my brush, I could easily overdo this. The idea is to bring out the detail, not to obscure it or hide it. That would be defeating the purpose. Doesn't take a whole lot of pigment to 
to make this effect work. But the key is that it should be dry. The paint on the brush should be mostly dry. Be careful not to create brush strokes when you do this. To avoid that, I'm kind of brushing in all sorts of different directions here. really making my shadows stand out even more so. The more highlight I introduce to the area, the more my shadow color stands out. Continue to work my way around the piece, distributing this highlight color via the dry brush. The next painting method that you absolutely need to learn is a method that we refer to as modeling. Now the idea of modeling with paint is that you're creating spots of color that are translucent or semi-translucent and layered over other colors. The idea is to further create breakup to create the translucent look of skin or the illusion of it. Now already it's looking pretty good but by introducing more color tonal variations into the equation I'm going to get even better results. Plus, it's going to allow me an opportunity to break up some of the basicness of this paint job because I'm really only getting light and dark here. We need to see more color. I'm going to use my alcohol palette for this. If you haven't tried the alcohol palettes yet, I strongly suggest it. There's several, uh, uh, several alcohol palettes on the market. Some of the more premier brands out there would be Skin Illustrator or Temp2 or Real Creations. In this case, I'm going to be using an alcohol palette from European Body Arts, which I really, really like. I highly recommend this, uh, this particular brand. Anyway, an alcohol palette works very similar to watercolors, except instead of activating with water, you're activating with alcohol. Uh, most specifically, you're activating with 91 to 99 percent alcohol. 70 percent alcohol isn't quite strong enough to activate it. At any rate, I'm going to start by taking some of my color from my palette, and you can see how thin and translucent it is. I can thin it down even more so by adding more alcohol to it. And the idea is to create a wash of this color that I can use to create breakup as I model it in spots of color. I can introduce browns and greens and blues and yellows and purples or whatever color I really want translucently. And the more color I add, the more realism I can get with my piece. Now when it comes to modeling, you can model with a brush, you can model with a sponge. You can even model with your fingers. The idea is just to create spots of color. Turn them around here so you can see a little better. Modeling some translucent brown colors. I'm going to keep everything at a random. If the color looks too strong, I'll hit it with a sponge or my finger to try to soften it up. Again, the idea is just to break up the color. So that there's tonal variations. Just like we see in real skin. I'm taking my skin. 
sponge and picking little pieces out of it. I've torn it in half. I'm carrying little pieces out of my sponge now. Be careful not to create a mess when you do this. I just stamp the colors in. The next painting method that you need to know is a technique that we like to call the spatter brush method. The way the spatter brush method works is you take an ordinary chip brush, a one inch chip brush or two inch chip brush, and you cut it right in half so that it can be used to spatter paint. As you can see, the area is getting kind of muddled and a little bit on the dark side. So I want to lighten that area up. So I'm going to get within about four to six inches from my working area, and I'm just going to create a mist of spattered paint. Introduce that spattered effect. And if it looks too strong, I'll hit it really quickly with my sponge, tap out that color to soften it. I'm going to continue working this color around the area, distributing those pale patches of flesh spattered with my chip brush. Watching as I go, I'm not going through the motions or going on autopilot, but I'm really looking for results as I do this. If I'm getting poor results, I'm going to stop right away. Otherwise, what's the point? This spatter some color into the area. I don't want to see red, I just kind of want to see the effect that the red would make as it lays over the green as if there's a little bit of blood flow. Another method of painting that you need to know is how to airbrush with stencils. I've added a little bit of black to my airbrush. I'm going to use this stencil that's just got a bunch of holes for uh, creating breakup. It's a pattern uh, from nature, probably of a cricket or a fish or something from the reptile world, but it's got wonderful breakup. So I'm going to use a little bit of black. I'm going to place it up against my sculpture here and then I'm going to just just going to blast the color through there, and that'll create some broken up patterns of color. And I kind of rotate as I go. I don't want to go too dark. I just I want everything to be very, very subtle and translucent. See how that's giving me a nice, fast breakup pattern? It just helps better sell this as realistic skin. I work my way around the area.
And there you have it. Those are the seven basic painting techniques that you need to know if you want to be a professional painter. With a few minor touches, this guy is going to be ready for set. Maybe even ready for the makeup museum at IMATS. We'll see. Anyway, my name's Rich Knight, and it's been a pleasure teaching you how to paint. I'll see you in the lab. Thank <laughs> you.